Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. If this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Michael. I am a fourth year medical student currently applying for emergency medicine residency programs. Now, this is a topic that I talk a lot about with the pre-med students that I do advising sessions with. And if you guys didn't know, I do offer pre-med advising. If you guys wanna book a time to talk with me, check out my Facebook link down in the description below. But for some reason, there are so many of you out there, myself included, that struggle through the pre-med curriculum during your undergraduate years. I don't know why it's so difficult. I guess it's just to kind of weed out the people that aren't maybe as serious about going to medical school. But if you aren't doing well, like don't worry, it has literally nothing to do with medical school or with medicine in general. Unfortunately, these are the classes that you have to take in order to go to medical school as of right now, but hopefully that will change in the near future. So if you have a low GPA or a low MCAT, I'm gonna be touching on both of those different subjects and what you should do if you are in any one of these situations. So let's start with the people that have a low GPA. And when I say low GPA, I'm more so talking about your science GPA, so biology, chemistry, physics, and math. The first thing that you guys want to acknowledge is if you have failed a class in one of those subjects. Um, and a failing class in college includes a C minus. So if you got a C minus, that is a failing grade as far as medical schools are concerned. So once you've identified if you fail the class, if you did, you just need to retake it. Now, when you retake that class, when you submit your transcript and input your grades into your med school application, it's gonna take the average of the two grades that you got in that particular course. So then once we establish that you have all passing grades, even if you still have a low uh, GPA, we need to kind of determine how low that GPA is. Are we talking about like a competitive low GPA? GPA like a 3.3 or are we talking about something like a 2.9, 2.5 in that range? Because it's very important to kind of distinguish which category you're in. Are you competitive low or are you actually like really low GPA? Because there's two different pathways that will apply to you depending on which group you're in. So if you're a competitive low, so we're talking about 3.4, 3.3, maybe 3.2, maybe 3.2. Then something you might wanna consider is taking additional upper level classes in order to help boost that science GPA. You can do this basically by just adding more classes and postponing your graduation. In that case, you'll still be able to qualify for financial aid. So if you're getting some sort of financial aid, some sort of grant or scholarship, you know, through the government, through the school, through whoever, Usually, as long as you haven't graduated yet, you'll still be able to qualify for those things. So like I said, you can take these additional classes just by picking them up yourself, or you can actually enroll into a post back program, which generally requires you to have graduated. So I only recommend post back programs for students that only need maybe a 0.1 boost in their GPA. So if you just wanna go from 3.3 to a 3.4, then a post back may be the best option for you. Now let's switch gears and go to the people that have a very low GPA. So essentially right around a 3.2 and below, you're gonna be kind of categorized into that very low GPA. Now without thinking about the MCAT, and we'll get to the MCAT in just a second, let's just focus on the grades. Because you guys are gonna need such a big boost in your GPA, a post back program is not gonna do it for you. So in this case, I'm gonna have to recommend a special master's program, which is what you guys have heard me talk about quite a bit in the past. Essentially what a special master's program is, is a one year master's program offered at a medical school. So you're gonna be doing the master's program at a medical school. That's kind of like the big key, the big kicker behind these SMP programs. Essentially what you're gonna be doing is getting a separate GPA. You're not gonna be boosting your undergraduate GPA. That is locked in, that's done. Let's kind of push that to the side and forget about it. Um, and now we're gonna focus on your master's level GPA. Normally at these special master's programs, as long as you hit a certain threshold, so for a lot of them, it's like around a 3.5, a 3.6, your first semester of that program. And if you do that, then they'll offer you a medical school interview during the spring semester. Usually these programs will kind of overlook your MCAT score. So if that's also low, 
you can kind of rest assured that they aren't gonna care too much about your MCAT, but we're gonna talk about that a little bit more in just a second. So just to kind of recap, if you're a competitive low GPA, then do a post back program because you just need a little bit of a bump in your GPA, and that's gonna bump up your undergraduate GPA. If you have an extremely low GPA, then you're probably gonna to need to do a special master's program it's not gonna affect your undergraduate GPA, but you're gonna now get a master's level GPA, which hopefully holds a little bit more weight than your undergraduate GPA. Kind of the idea behind these special master's programs is you're taking very similar classes to the ones that you'll take your first year of med school. So if you do really well in these programs, they kind of already know that you're gonna do very well in medical school. All right, so let's now talk about the MCAT because the MCAT is a lot of people's Achilles heel. It gives a lot of people so many problems and a lot of people, even though you may have maybe a really good GPA, you may not do very well on the MCAT and that could also hurt your chances of getting into medical school. So in this situation, there are two categories once again. So there's people with really high GPAs and a low MCAT, and then there's also people with a low GPA and a low MCAT. So we'll talk about both of those groups. So if you fall into the group of a high competitive GPA, I'm talking about 3.5 and above, we'll say, and these numbers aren't concrete and everyone's situation is different. And then if you have a low MCAT score, the average MCAT score is right around a 502. I would say the average MCAT score of an accepted pre-med student is probably around a 506 to 508 and that's accepted. So let's just say if your MCAT is, you know, right around a 503, 502 and below, we'll kind of consider that a lower uh, MCAT score. So if this is the case, you have a high GPA and kind of a lower MCAT score, what should you do in this situation? This is one of the hardest categories to be in because there's not like a special master's program for the MCAT. You know, the special master's program helps, you know, prove that you're, you can improve your grades, but there's nothing to really show that you can improve your MCAT score without actually retaking the MCAT. So in this situation, it's definitely case dependent, but I would probably recommend retaking the MCAT. I know this is a very unpopular piece of advice because nobody wants to restudy for the MCAT. Nobody wants to take, you know, an eight hour long test again. But at the end of the day, if you apply to medical school and you just don't get accepted anywhere, you don't get interviews, then it kind of leaves you no choice but to retake the MCAT and to try and improve that score. Which brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Exam Crackers. If you guys didn't know, Exam Crackers just rolled out its all new MCAT prep course called Crack U or Crack University. This is supposed to be an all-inclusive MCAT prep course. And I think the best thing about it is it's under $500. Yes, under $500, kind of unheard of for an MCAT prep course, but Exam Crackers, has been doing this for a while now and they really have it pretty much dialed in on everything that you guys are gonna need to be successful on your MCAT. They've even offered my viewers additional money off. So if you guys use my discount code, which can be found down in the description, you guys will save a little bit more money. So what's so innovative about Crack U? Well, for one, it has everything you guys need from textbooks to video lectures, to practice quizzes, to practice exams. You're gonna find all of that within your Crack U subscription. They even provide you guys with four hours of tutoring from Monday to Thursday, as well as two hours of tutoring on Friday and Saturdays. Normally with other test prep companies, you have to pay quite a bit more to actually get tutoring. So this is actually a huge plus with the Crack U subscription. And then with your subscription, they're also throwing in their once weekly intense focus courses where you're gonna have a live instructor going over very high yield topics that are gonna show up on the MCAT. And I know I talked about retaking the MCAT and this might be a great option for those of you who are gonna plan on retaking the MCAT because you probably aren't gonna need six months, nine months to study again for the MCAT. So something like three or four months is perfect. And for three months, you're gonna get everything that I just talked about for under $500. So that's including 10 full length practice exams, 24 sectional exams going over high yield topics that you guys are gonna read about in the book, 43 30 minute exams, over 4,000 practice questions, and then loads of flashcards that are already pre-made. And you guys also have the ability to make your own flashcards. Now there's so much extra stuff that comes with your crack 
Kotaku University. And I actually made a more in-depth video going over pretty much everything that comes with your Kotaku subscription. You guys can find that link here. But if you guys just aren't quite sure right now, Exam Crackers actually offers you guys a one week free trial of this new MCAT prep course. So let's get back to the video. Now, if you retake the MCAT, and you do worse or do about the same as your first try, then there kind of is a little bit of a loophole. I don't always recommend it um, because it is costly and it's not guaranteed, but you can go and do a special master's program at that point because they don't really care too much about the MCAT. And so as long as you do well in the SMP program, which you probably will since you did well in your pre-med classes, then you have a good chance of being accepted into that particular medical school or maybe a different medical school at that point. Again, this is because through the SMP program, you're gonna get a master's level GPA, and so medical schools aren't gonna weigh your MCAT score as heavily. Okay, so let's talk about people with a low MCAT and a low GPA. What do you do in this scenario? Well, with a low MCAT and a low GPA, um, you kind of have to worry about the GPA first. So we already talked about those options. Um, and like I said, if you do a special master's program, they might overlook the lower MCAT score that you have. If your MCAT score is below a 495 and you're in one of these special master's programs, then you're gonna need to retake your MCAT to get at least above a 495. Now, I don't want it to sound like going and doing one of these SMP programs is gonna get you into medical school because that's not always the case and you definitely shouldn't rely on that to get into medical school. It's gonna be much easier for you guys to do as well as you can during your pre-med years than to go through one of these SMP programs. One, they're very time consuming, so it's an extra year wasted. And two, they're very expensive, so it's equivalent to a year of medical school. So if you do end up doing one of these SMP programs, which a lot of you probably will, you kind of have two options at that point. You do really well, you get an interview, and then you hopefully get into medical school, or you don't actually hit the threshold that you need, um, you don't get an interview, and then what do you do from there? At that point, I think kind of your only other option is to do a Caribbean medical school, which is not a bad option if you have an open mind and becoming a physician is really what you want to do. I know a lot of doctors, and I have friends that are actually in Caribbean schools right now. The students are doing well, and then the doctors, you know, they made it. They're physicians. So it's definitely possible, but it is just another speed bump, you know, in this long journey towards becoming a doctor. Now, there is the option of not doing an SMP program. If you have trouble taking the MCAT and doing well and you have a low GPA, you can forego the SMP program and go straight to a Caribbean medical school. For some of you, this may be a good option because you'll get the title of MD um, after your name, which is important to a lot of people, especially when you're trying to go into specific specialties that cater more towards MDs. And these will include subspecialties in surgery, like orthopedics. It includes dermatology and essentially any other very hyper competitive specialty. The reason I mention this is the majority of these SMP programs are at DO medical schools. There are SMP programs at MD schools, but in order to get into those schools, you have to already have kind of a higher GPA and a decent MCAT, which kind of defeats the point of the SMP program. That's why I really only recommend going to some of these DO programs because that's kind of the programs where um, a lower GPA and a lower MCAT will allow you to get into them. So clearly, guys, there's other things that you need to do in order to get into medical school. You need patient care experience. You need volunteering. You need to shadow physicians. You may even do some research, which isn't always required. And I don't always recommend if you're not interested in research. But there's all of these other things, all of these other components to your application that are required to get accepted to medical school. The reason we focus on the MCAT and GPA so much is because those are the two things that will open the door for these admission committees to actually look at your application. If you have a low GPA and a low MCAT score, they're not going to bother looking at essentially the rest of your application. So guys, that's essentially the pathway that I like to use with the pre-med students that I do advising sessions with. Like I said, everyone has a different situation. And so this is kind of just like a general roadmap that you guys can use when kind of determining 
um, how to get into medical school with like these different stat combinations. I made some videos on like the easiest DO medical schools to get into. I made a recent video on the newest medical schools that are opening up. Um, so these are all videos that may assist you in determining where to apply for medical school. So definitely check out some of those videos. I'll put some of those links in the description below. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments. Be happy to answer those for you guys. And I hope to see you guys in another one of my videos.